galaxy, it's time for Bantha Soup, the show where everything Star Wars related is up for discussion. I am your host, Gil Garcia. Today in the Bantha Take, we're taking a look at the Target exclusive Vandor One playset with included three and three quarter inch Chewbacca action figure with goggles from Hasbro's 2018 toy line of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, let's check it out. Come on. The two-sided Vandor 1 playset from Solo A Star Wars Story is a Target exclusive. The front of the box has some very visually striking images taken straight from the train heist scene. The set also comes with a packed-in Chewbacca with goggles and blaster rifle. The rear side of the box showcases everything that comes with the set, including play features, images on both sides of the playset, and this kid looking very frustrated that his Force Link 2.0 wristband doesn't work and it's just as bad as the first one. Just kidding, he loves his Chewie. This is a hard cardstock playset with plastic elements. That type of playset is very reminiscent of the old vintage Kenner designs, except the other way around. Kenner used more plastic based playsets with cardstock elements rather than a cardstock playset with plastic elements. The first piece of cardstock you see are the actual trains that protrude from the playset. As you can see, you literally have to punch out the images from the perforated piece of cardboard. These are actually the most delicate parts of the entire set. All you do is simply fold and build around the included plastic train frame. It was very easy to build, I just had to be extra careful not to rip. The rest of the cardstock pieces are a lot thicker and sturdy, especially the base of the set. Just like the trains, you have to punch out all the pieces from perforated cardboard. The images printed on the cardstock look great. All the colors are very bright and clear, and it gives you a good representation of what Vandor 1 looked like in the film. Overall, I do feel that the hard cardstock design looks fantastic, with all the great images, the layout of the set, and the potential to set up multiple figures for multiple display and scene recreations. However, from a play value standpoint, I worry how long a playset like this will last with kids. I played really hard with my toys, took them outside in the grass, dirt, and mud. How long will cardboard last with play like that? I feel that this will be a fantastic display piece for diorama displays up on a shelf, but fear it'll break down with normal play and the amount of times it has to be taken apart and rebuilt. There are two sides of the Vandor 1 Heist playset. One side recreates the train scene, while the other side is the Iridium Mountain. There were two key points of interest in these mountains, the Crispian Imperial Depository which was a depository that received shipments of cargo such as valuable hyperfuel and coaxium and Fort Yipso. This is the place where Solo first meets Lando and they play that first legendary game of Sabacc. And there is a doorway in which your action figures can go through to enter one world or the other. When fully assembled, this playset is massive. First, let's take a look at the train high side. With images including snowcap, mountains of Vandor 1, range troopers on the 20T rail crawler conveyor X transport, and an incoming Y45 armored transport hauler piloted by Rio. This side has ample room for play and figure display as it has a large open base. One of the main features of this side of the set are the 20T rail crawler conveyor X transports. As I said previously, these transports have much thinner cardstock that wraps around the plastic frame of the trains and locks in a place with tabs. The images and overall look of the trains do look amazing. Looking at the entire thing put together looks fantastic. There's a great little doorway that leads from the back of the playset. You can stand up an action figure on a small observation platform. The top portion of the train has a couple areas where figures can be pinned down. Two of them can be found directly on top. This is a scene taken straight from the film. When Beckett's gang trips the security sensor, multiple rain troopers deploy on the crew using magnetic boots. This allows them to walk on the outside of the train. It's a cool little play feature that kids will love. However, the pins are a little thin and your figure can easily be knocked off. Clear action figure stands plug into holes on the side of the train car. I suppose it works okay, but I didn't want to punch out the holes on the side of my car just to put a stand on it. I think it looks better without, as mine will be for display only. But if you're a kid, I could really see you getting lots of play value out of this play feature. Now we're gonna make our way over to the Iridium Mountains. This is the specific location of Fort Yipso, the place where Han first meets Lando. This side has graphics of a really great mountain wall with embedded light images and snow. 
This side has multiple play features from the doorway, the staircase, and a real working gate. There's also a really great looking Fort Yipso local. I'd stay away from that guy. The staircase has two sets of stairs with two observation platforms. The stairs are just flat pieces of thick cardboard with images designed to look like steps. If I raise up the lower staircase, you can see more room on the base of the playset for extended play space and storage. You can see images of cargo containers, lights, snow, and the mountain wall. The highest platform has a really good space for play and display. The top also has a really great image of the Fort Gipso Village where you can find a gambling den and a droid combat arena known as the Lodge. One of the best play features of the set is the real working gate. I can imagine a kid parking the Millennium Falcon behind this gate and having the gang break it free. The gate is a gray molded plastic with light details, security bars, and a small control area. The gate also has four sturdy legs for it to stand on. The gate can be manually moved from open to close on one side. On the side of the playset, you also have a small base platform for extended play space and a really cool section that has a break in the mountain. You can see the 20T trains through this mountain opening. I can also see Emphy's nest flying through this opening to try to make a quick getaway. Taking a look at the included Chewbacca figure, I've got to say, this is one of the better pack-in figures I've seen in a long time. Normally pack-in figures are complete garbage as they really skimp on the figure in order to put more value in the playset. However, this is an actual Chewbacca from the Solo 3 and 3 quarter basic assortment line. This is a 4 POA figure with movable arms and legs. His face has a really great sculpt with a really great color scheme. His torso has a detailed brown double bandolier with silver painted ammunition in the straps. Chewie has some really great sculpted fur and some awesome big Wookiee feet. The rear side of the figure showcases his brown messenger bag that is attached to the bandolier. You can also find little buckles and pouches. I gotta say, one of the best things about this figure is the included removable goggles. Chewie looks awesome in goggles. The goggles can be easily removed from the top of his head and easily slid back over his eyes. That's a fantastic play feature. Chewie also comes with not a bowcaster, but a highly detailed large heavy blaster rifle. Oh, and here's one last late discovery concerning the playset. You can place the cover over the doorway for display purposes and also for a great play feature. Your figure can come blasting through the wall. I think it's a great added touch and gives you multiple options when playing and displaying. The Crispin Imperial Depository was a depository located in the Iridium Mountains on the planet Vandor 1 that received shipments of cargo such as the valuable hyperfuel coaxium. It was deliberately built in a location that was difficult to reach and lacked any airfield or hangars to receive cargo drops, and instead incoming ships were mounted on 20T rail crawler conveyor X transports. Lando Calrissian's ship, the Millennium Falcon, was impounded by the Imperials when he landed on Vandor 1. In order to get his ship back, Lando engaged in Hands of Sabacc at the Lodge to build up enough credits to get it out. That is, until he met Solo and Chewbacca, who had other plans to use the Falcon. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, we would really appreciate a like on our video. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date on everything Bantha Soup. We do reviews, we build customs, we talk about everything Star Wars. And check us out on Facebook at Bantha Soup. Send us a comment, send us a message, send us some pictures, give us a like, let's talk Star Wars. Galaxy, thank you so much for watching. My name is Gil, and this is Ben.